In this tutorial, we're going to show you how we created the clouds for the Air Foria map inside UEFN. One of the primary goals was to achieve an aesthetically pleasing cloudscape that could surround both the city and the floating islands, all while maintaining a satisfactory frame rate across various devices. If you've played the map, you will notice that the lighting changed from daylight to sunset lighting. We're going to see how to implement smooth transitioning from these two lighting scenarios. Using a simple setup inside Houdini, we generated the shape of the cloudscape. With a custom tool, we were able to simulate the interaction of lighting with the clouds, allowing them to quickly adjust the lighting scenarios. To avoid generating UVs for the cloud mesh or baking the lighting information into a texture, we use the vertex color data, this data being accessible inside UEFN. Once the geometry has been imported, assign a material to your mesh. From here, we can use the RGB data stored inside the vertex color to control which lighting we want. The R channel is used for the first lighting, the B channel for the second lighting, and the G channel stores an ambient occlusion pass. For each lighting scenario, we predefined a bright color and a dark color. And because we want to change the material on all the clouds in the map at the same time, we used a material parameter collection to store all of these values, which you can animate from the sequencer with a single track. The material is very simple. We get the material parameter collection value set earlier using the lighting channel multiplied by the ambient occlusion. We are interpolating between the light color and the dark color. We do this for both lighting scenarios and then do a final interpolation to control which lighting to display. Of course, the geometry is not enough to give the clouds this fluffy look. To do so, we use the Niagara system that spawns on top of the geometry. After creating a new Niagara system, add a static mesh user parameter. Set the source as attached parent. This will use the parent geometry of the Niagara system as a source. Add a static mesh location module in the particle spawn stack and drag the user parameter into the mesh field. Set the sampling type to vertices and the position sampling to soft. We're not going into too much detail here, but we have created parameters to control a few aspects of the particles, like the amount of particles or their size. To liven the particles and give a sense of lighting, we added a custom module to the system. Inside this one, we have added these parameters. You will notice they are similar to the ones we created in the material parameter collection. A light and dark color parameter for each lighting scenario and float parameters for the ambient occlusion and lighting scenario. We added an extra color parameter called vertex color and a curved parameter called remap. The module itself is very similar to the material setup. Light and dark values are multiplied by the ambient occlusion, and we use the channel stored inside the vertex color to interpolate between them. We then output the result into a new color parameter that can connect to the particle's color. After saving our new module, we can add it to the particle update stage of our emitter. The next step is to create user parameters that will be linked to it. We'll use the same colors as in our material and add a float parameter to manage the lighting scenario. Let's connect these new parameters to our custom module. The vertex color field is using an existing parameter generated by the static mesh model added earlier. Simply find the parameter called sampled vertex color and drag it to the vertex color field. Now we are finished with our Niagara system. Let's head back to our level. Drag and drop the Niagara system into your map. Set its position to zero and then attach it to your cloud mesh. You will need to change any parameters in the detail panel to make the particles appear. To change the lighting scenario, add your cloud particles, a new parameter collection into a sequence. Add a track for the lighting scenario and keyframe it from zero to one. For the cloud particles, add the Niagara component track then the lighting scenario track, and finally add the same keyframes as with the material parameter collection. We can now change the lighting during our gameplay. Voila!